Good morning, welcome to Ainsley News. It's Wednesday the 3rd of February and today we're talking about that silver short squeeze and what we've all learned. On Monday we wrote about and discussed the Wall Street Bets Reddit group orchestrating a short squeeze on the silver market. We discussed at that time the various reasons and sheer scale of the short positions in the silver market and questioned the ability of WSB to move such a big market compared to GameStop. With hindsight now, the squeeze did intend see or did indeed see prices rise significantly, but now retrace over half of that gain, still up around 4% from when the news broke. This has many people asking, where to from here? We won't know fully until the commitment of traders report on Saturday morning, our time, but it would appear they have doubled down on their shorts, or this was just a retail FOMO spike. One of the reasons we discussed <clears throat> previously is the theory of deliberate manipulation by some of the big commercial traders dominated by so-called bullion banks. There are arguments for and against this position and likely a truth in between. And when we said the previous article we've discussed, there are some legitimate commercial re reasons to be shorting silver. If you are, say, a miner head hedging your production. This next piece we're going to talk about is from long-term COMEX analyst Ted Butler. Ted is firmly in manipulation camp and presents a compelling case that then raises the question of why would I buy a manipulated commodity? The answer, frankly, is that silver has still outperformed both Aussie shares and property over the last 15 years, despite this supposed suppression. The prospect therefore remains of either natural market forces or supply and demand or other such orchestrated attack on the long side to break all these shorts for the mother of all squeezes. We are not going to tell you what is happening and what will happen, as that would be pure speculation. What we can say that at a time of fundamentally bullish case for all such well, hard assets like silver, gold, platinum and Bitcoin, silver sits as the most shorted of all. Despite the recent rally, the gold-silver ratio is historically very high at 69. Maths, reversion and the mean, and financial history appears to be on the side of silver. We just got a little glimpse of a little online group being able to move the silver market 15% in a couple of days. Consider when a small fraction of the 300 trillion in inflated financial assets moves to the safety of hard assets. And now over to Ted Butler. The current short position in COMEX Silver is mostly held by eight financial firms. We can only guess who they are because their identities are protected. According to the COT reports, the biggest four are short nearly 60,000 contracts, and the next four are short nearly 20,000 contracts. That's a total of 400 million silver ounces. Annual mining production of silver amounts to less than 800 million ounces. The short position in silver dwarfs any other commodity. Furthermore, it is concentrated in a few hands, and thus open to manipulation. Over the years, this shorting strategy has proven to be lucrative, as the big shorts would buy back their short positions on price drops. Recently, the Justice Department and the CFTC punished JP Morgan, Bank of America Merrill Lynch, Deutsche Bank and Scotiabank with a deferred criminal prosecution agreement for the practice of spoofing, which has meant they were often putting in fake sell orders to spark a price drop. In the last year, things have changed, and the big shorts have found themselves unable to buy back their short position as they had in the past. In addition, JP Morgan, the ringleader of the big shorts, reversed gears and eliminated its short position in silver and gold. As gold and silver rose in price, the losses of the big eight big shorts began to mount and at year's end totaled $14 billion. In the last few days, the picture for the big shorts has darkened even further. On January the 20th, a 20 million ounce silver deposit was made in SLV. Following the explosion in trading volume of 150 million shares in SLV on Thursday, a $34 million ounce deposit came in. Friday's 110 million share volume leads me to believe that the total net purchases in SLV for both days was 50 million ounces, and a considerable remainder is still due to be deposited in SLV. If such a large percentage of available silver in 1,000 ounce bar form had been purchased, why has the price not exploded? The big shorts are selling new SLV shares. In other words, they're shorting additional silver to keep the price down to prevent a price run on silver. To make matters worse, they're borrowing or leasing the silver to deposit in SLV, which is in effect another short, since that silver must be paid back. The authorised participants doing this in SLV are no doubt connected to the four big shorts on the COMEX. The only reason they could do so aggressively at such low prices and further compound their position by borrowing physical silver at such low prices is to prevent the SLV price from rising. 
Another consideration is the dramatic tightening of intermonth spread differentials in both COMEX gold and silver future contracts. Last spring, the spreads blew out to unprecedented wide levels, and now they have tightened in nearly as dramatically. My conclusion is that this is a strong indication of wholesale physical tightness in both gold and silver. When something is cheap, as silver surely is, it makes sense to buy it and not sell it, and certainly not sell it short. Yet, that is precisely what the big shorts are doing on the COMEX, and in SLV by leasing the metal they are depositing. Leasing is nothing more than another version of short selling, and the only possible motivation for the big new short selling by the big shorts is to keep the price from rising, which is about as illegal and manipulative as it gets. Everyone watching silver has been shocked by the developments of the past few days. You can be sure the big shorts were just as shocked. The Robin Hood Reddit development was a true bolt out of the blue, completely unexpected and earth-shaking in significance. The best the big shorts have been able to do in reaction is to short more COMEX contracts and borrow scads of physical metal to throw at the SLV and perhaps influence Robin Hood to prevent its clients from buying SLV. The only question that remains is will the big shorts succeed in stemming the pricing tide in silver? Some lovely insight there for the Wall Street bets versus JP Morgans out there in the world. Right, well, over to ainsleybullion.com.au for all things physical, gold, silver, platinum, ainsleywealth.com.au for all things cryptocurrency. We've literally just seen a bit of a jump in BTC just now, so jump over there and have a look. And goldsilverstandard.com for our own cryptocurrency built and backed by real gold and silver. Enjoy your day, and we'll catch you tomorrow for more news.